What does honor mean to you? What does freedom mean to you? These questions will remain the same in each interview, but the power lies within these amazing answers. I'm Tony Reese, and it is with great honor I introduce to you the next installment of My Life Lessons Showcasing Veterans. Hi, this is Tony Reese, and welcome to My Life Lessons Showcasing Veterans. And today, my special guest is Donald Kaufman. Welcome to this very special project. So, Donald, take a moment and tell us where you served and how long you served. I served over in the Pacific. I uh, enlisted when I was 17 years old, got out of high school three months to go into service. And the reason I went in the service, I knew the time was coming when I was going to be, I had to. You had to do in, something. I had to go in. Yep. And I'll never forget when Pearl Harbor was bombed. That day, I was listening to the radio, I heard it, I ran out of the kitchen and said to my mom and dad, we're going to have war. And I'm not, I know I'm going to be enlisted, so I'm going to volunteer. I'm not going in the Army. I'm not going in the Navy. I'm going in the Marine Corps. And my dad didn't say no. My mom says, no, you're not. So anyway, that's when I decided to go in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And then I got out of high school three months. And at 17, I went in the Marine Corps. I went to Paris Island for boot camp, which was... The, the toughest months of my life. And then from there, I went out to California for advanced training. And uh, we spent a year out there. So I went over the Pacific. And the first islands we invaded was the Marshall Islands, Roy and Namur. And then the second one we invaded was the Mariana Islands, Saipan, and Tinyan, and then the last one I was at was Iwo Jima. So that was a, the, my four islands I landed on. My goodness, how long did you serve, sir? I served for three years. And then, uh, I have a note here in a quotation. Uh, our, our biggest island was, was uh, Iwo Jima. And it was a small island shaped like a pork chop. We didn't know where we were going until we were aboard ship. And we, I left on an LST, which is a flat boat bottom, not too comfortable. But anyway, we left Hawaii January the 10th. It took us 39 days to get to Iwo Jima. And then we uh, invaded Iwo Jima February the 19th. And uh, wounded on the first day and laid on the hospital ship for three days till the hospital ship was filled with wounded men. And we left the 22nd. It took 39 days to San Diego Naval Hospital. And then I uh, spent two weeks there. We left there for Charleston, South Carolina to the Naval Hospital on a troop train. It took us one week to travel by train. We took all the side routes, a kind of no one knowing we were military uh, troop, troop train. So then it, I spent three weeks in the hospital and then I uh, was transferred. Well, anyway, I, I had a furlough from from down there, South Carolina, and then I was spent 30 days at home. I went down to the hospital again, and two days later they said, "How would you like to go home for 30 days?" I said, "Fine. Well, we'll transfer you to the Philadelphia Naval Hospital." So I had another 30 days at home. So I went to the Naval Hospital. I was only there a week, and then I was 
discharged and they sent me to Fort Mifflin Ammunition Depot right across the bay. And I spent about three months there till I was discharged doing guard duty. Oh my goodness. So that was my... I can't uh, imagine the stories that you have from yeah. this experience. And I, I believe we're going to be doing another interview with you to get more of these details. But let me ask you, during that time of service, who inspired you? Or what inspired you during that time of service? Well, I guess the Marine Corps itself. I know I wanted to go in, and we had some really good men. And uh, I learned a lot in a few weeks. I was at boot camp, very strict, and uh, but it changed my life. I know that, and I'm just. Glad I went in the Marine Corps, and I'm glad I came out, too. Mm -hmm. Speaking of what you said, I've learned a lot. What was the greatest life lesson that you learned during that time of service? Discipline. That's one of the biggest things you learn, because you had to do what you were told to do, whether you liked it or not. And a lot of stuff was new stuff you thought you couldn't do, but you did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine the type of courage that it took to continue to learn to do it mm -hmm. and to stay there to do it. How did you apply that discipline and just knowing that you just had to get it done? How did that apply to you after service? Well, I, I learned a lot and I, I guess a lot of that I did learn discipline was being in the service. Mm -hmm. Did you carry that discipline trait into your work life? I would say so. How yeah. so? Well, I didn't know what I, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I got out. It was two things in my mind, and one was to be a, a state cop, and the other was to be a postal, be in a postal service, and uh, I just never went further than that. I went to. Albright took an aptitude test. I've passed everything, but I still couldn't make up my mind what I wanted to do. So I found myself a job, and I was there employed for 40 years, and I'm, I'm glad I did that. Mm -hmm. You stayed with that. Yes. How did the uh, time in service and all the experiences that you had, as I read some of your bio there, how did that impact your life? I saw that um, you were awarded a Purple Heart. Yes, I, uh, in fact, I, I was wounded on Saipan very slightly. I only missed three days of combat. But I got a Purple Heart for that, but I never got it in my discharge. But on Iwo Jima, I was wounded the first day we landed. And uh, I was wounded quite seriously there. Lucky uh, I got out alive. And that's why I spent all these months in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And how did, how did that experience, Donald, impact your life, your family, m your future, being in, in the military, serving the way that you did, going through what you did? How did that impact you? Well, <coughs> after you get, get out of it, you, you, you always had it in your mind, but I never bragged too much about it. I heard guys saying stuff that I knew wasn't true, and, and I was none of them. And uh, I, I, I met my, I knew my wife before I went in the service, but we weren't close, but we, once in a while we'd write a letter. And then as we got, before I got out of the service, we got closer and closer. And then when I was stationed down in Philadelphia, I got off every other weekend and, and uh, I came home then. I lived in, a, in Leesport, a little town up the line. And I came home and we got closer and closer. And finally, when I got out, I, I got out in March. And uh, let's see, we got, I got out in March. And uh, 
we start going study then, but we got to start going before I got out. But then, and uh, I need help. Well, you, you just celebrated 70 <laughs> years of marriage? 70? Yeah, last year, yeah. 2016? Yeah. 70 years of marriage. Yeah. yeah. So, discipline? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? Okay. Donald, what does honor mean to you? It's, it's, it's a great thing, I think. How so? Well, honor means to me that you did something good or you enjoyed what you did, were doing and that's why you got honored for, I guess. And that's what it means to you? Yeah. You enjoyed doing it and you were honored for it. Right. Okay. Anything else honor brings to mind for you? I don't know. How about freedom? What does freedom mean to you? That, that means a lot. Can you help that, me understand that, what? <coughs> that's why we went in the war, to fight for our country and maintain freedom. So we've always, always ready to do whatever we were told to do. To fight for that freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is really, truly the most important thing. Yes, I would think so. Yes. Donald Kaufman, thank you so much for your service and thank you so very much for taking the time to come in here and be part of this very special project. Thank you. Thank you very much.